howdy, howdy, howdy. Welcome back, Breaking Waves. And we have our first victim, our music man, Dan, followed with the beautiful, the gorgeous, the amazing, talented... Yeah, keep going, keep going. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to finish Oh, it no, off. I was I about thought you were going to finish I, me I, off. No, we, we, none of us are going to finish, unfortunately, <laughs> today. We hope the audience does, though. Yeah, it's your boy, Devon Taylor, a.k.a. Daddy Disco, on Twitter and Instagram. And, uh, yeah, uh, excited to get our first uh, interrogation. That's why I wanted us two to be, both be on the same side of the table. I feel like a detective. I, I Yeah, I don't want to have, I wanted him to feel scared. Um, like, we're, like, approaching him, like, I, I'm going to be the good cop, right? Are you going to be the bad yeah, cop? Oh, you, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> We're going to get some friggin' dirt out of this kid, okay? <laughs> so buckle up. It's going to be a real sexy ride. Um, first interview. Let's go. Let's torture somebody. And uh, no, we didn't record this on the same day. We just like these outfits. Grow up. I'm poor and don't have a lot of clothes, <laughs> okay? So let's move on. All right. How are we bringing in to the interview? Welcome to the set. Nick. Hello. Samson. Hello, hello. How What's you doing, buddy? I'm good. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Um, I would be reminisced not to mention that it's Nick's birthday today. Happy birthday, Nick. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate it. had no idea that we were throwing a birthday party today, and well, we're doing it right now. The party now. hasn't started yet. This <laughs> oh, is like no, kind it's of started warm now. up to the party. You know what I mean? We got a nice bottle of vino that we're going to pop later. Yes. Um, 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 well, that's what Nick said. You're, you're a big red wine guy, it. right? Is that oh, true? Yeah. yeah. Do you have yeah. a favorite varietal? <sighs> you know what? I mean, we drink a lot of cheap wine and that's all I So you're going up into TJ and you're like hey, yeah. give me every 5 buck check you got I'm trying to get pissed drunk I'm not, is that what you're doing I'm not I'm not picky just a nice merlot you're like, is it purple Yes yeah, is it is purple Is it purple and about 12% Is that's... it going to make my mouth feel like sandpaper that's all I have a question for and that's what I want yeah. really I guess stay I, in your lips <laughs> I had like a 25 dollar bottle of wine in like a couple weeks I'm like wow Whoa. this is amazing when it's good, you can literally tell a difference. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah. See, that's why you train yourself with, like, shit for a while before you step up. Like, my training beer was PBR. I drank nothing but PBR for, like, two months. Like, like not two months. Like, a whole year, pretty much. Nothing but PBR. So once I started drinking, like, good beers, then I was like, oh. This, this is, is what everyone was talking about. Yeah, this, though. We were talking about this earlier. This they are really not a sponsor today. yet, but yes, it's a hazy we IPA. Okay, we yeah. can't. It's a it's a yes. unnamed. Let us take care of that, <laughs> Nick. You know what I mean? You're, you're in really kind of good hands. I don't know how the hands. sponsorships work here. Yeah, yeah. You're you're in really kind of good hands. But uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Um, you look absolutely gorgeous. How often do you get stopped on the street and someone says, "Are do I know you from something? You you look famous because." I can't imagine well, that these it happens days, all the time. Well, these days, and it's hard to tell from the nose up, but... Oh, no. That's that is, that that's is very no, true. No, I've, I've gotten a, a few... A couple shout-outs out on couple, the street. No, when I, I have longer hair, I get, <laughs> I get Timothy Chalamet a lot. Mm. I, mm. Oh, that sucks. I mean, yeah, because yeah. I, that's a really hard life. <laughs> oh, oops, I look like the most gorgeous person ever <laughs> oh, on the darn. planet. Who comes in here and says, you know what I get when I have longer hair? <laughs> Timothy Chalamet a lot. You know what I mean? Okay. I mean, I, I, I'm I, not going to disagree. I'm just disappointed <laughs> in you bringing it up. I was going to bring it up. So I mean, I can me see it. those cheekbones through the mask. Like, even if he was yeah, wearing yeah, a mask, just, you would no still mask see that jawline and the cheekbones. Like, oh, yeah. No I mask see. can hide those bones. Um, I have a question. Sure. So, grew up Cleveland, Ohio. Yes. I have, like... I met a lot of people recently from Cleveland, Ohio. They're all like the, the coolest kids. Did all the cool kids leave Cleveland, Ohio, or is everyone there amazing? Do I need a visit? <sighs> Just Ohio in general. I, uh, there's a lot of people out here. Ohio. From Ohio. Midwest in general. I mean, I'm Midwest. a Midwest kid, you know, so like Midwest people are just, they're, they're the best. Yeah, I mean, there's almost as many people in L.A. as there are in, in all of Ohio, but it has such a large outreach. I think it's because of a lot of the state schools and stuff, so we get around, and we're... What was your experience guess, being there? Like, you're, were you ever like, this is cold, this is sucks, I need to get out of here? Or did you have, like, a nice time? All of that? Um, it's, uh, it's pretty normal, you know? It's very, very Midwest. Right. We're all over football and our 
and our beer and you're a Browns fan. And a Brown, I am a huge Browns. I fan. really want to go to a Browns game. It's yes. like it's a bucket list of mine because like that's where the real fans are. Said are no so, one ever. And I've been through. A, we've been through a lot. No, that's exactly. See, they've been like they've just been through it, and but they're still there, right. and they always we will be. We got a little be. taste that's, of uh, a victory last year, so. Yeah, your boys are looking good. Peter they Pitch are. Steelers good. finally. Are. Yeah, okay. Uh, grow up, Peter Pan. So, who do people in St. Louis root for now? Uh, nobody anymore. I mean, we're St. Louis is a baseball city, like through that's and true. through. I mean, and the Blues are really great too. Like we we do, we got two really good franchises oh, elsewhere. I wasn't. Uh, I, I'm an Eagles fan just because, like, while I was growing up, and the Rams were in St. Louis. That like they sucked. Like I like I didn't start watching football until like after they were good, mm -hmm. and then they sucked. So I picked a different team. Right. But then I followed them here because they I I came to L A like the year after they moved to L A. Gotcha. Nick, I feel like you played sports. What did you dabble in? in I did, high school, middle bit. school, anything? Um, I played sports up until junior year of high school. A little bit of everything. Played baseball. Okay. I played football, and then I stopped growing. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, <laughs> junior, like, play, Nick, are you gonna grow yeah. any bigger? No, when I was like, you know, 10, 12 years old, it was like, I'm gonna go to Ohio State, I'm mm -hmm. gonna play linebacker for Ohio State, I'm this gonna, the, gonna go the to the Cleveland NFL, dream. Mm -hmm. the Cleveland Dream, you know, and then, uh, you know. Think but you did end eight. up making it to Ohio State. We'll, I did. we'll jump into that later yes. after that. Um, I want to get into the little bit of the music scene because sure. you're, you're doing a little bit of dabble of everything, but you're um, a musical entity. It's La Pore? La Pore, yes. La Pore. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, interesting enough, Dev, I didn't know if you knew this. It's a play on your mother's maiden name. It is. Mm. Why, why is that? Is, does she play a big role in You your know musical? what? I mean, I, it, it's, it's not really a crazy story. I was just, um, starting, I was just writing music for myself at, at this point. And um, I originally started off with for like two weeks with the name Swim. That was taken. That was probably nine already. million hey, different we, variations of the we, name we Swim. Know I know. Guys. I know there was a yeah. Swim here with two M's. I think mm -hmm. that was that Swim. Did yours have three M's or just <laughs> one, or what was the deal? <laughs> um, I I think it was two. I think I was going with two. You were the two M too. Yeah, yeah not that creative. It looks cool in a poster. But um, I don't know. Um. La, La Pori was just different. So it, it in uh, growing up, um, it was pronounced La Pore. Her last name was La Pore. Yeah, because you put a space between the L A and the P O R E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just spaced that out. And then um, I guess in um, in Italy, it's pronounced La Pore. So um, I put a little accent on the E that's to funny. emphasize that. I, that's which is not used. That accent is not used in Italian. Mm. So I definitely. Oh stole, yeah, see, because I thought that it was, culturally, I, I thought it was French because of yeah, the accent. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, no. So you just pissed off a lot that. of Italians. I did. Yeah, you right. Did. Nice. Okay. Well, I guess we got that going for you. No, but it's a, it's a beaut. I love it. Like it sounds really cool, and I like that it's your mother's maiden name. Like I think that's super awesome. Did you guys ever travel to Italy? Like as I kids have or not, anything? I have not been. Um, none of my immediate family has. My grandmother has. So my, my. Um, my grandma Joyce, who's grandma, grandma Lepore, her mother was born in Sicily and mm -hmm. came here when she was two, maybe. Um, and I know I have a lot of cousins there still. I don't, I, not, you I don't have really so keep many cousins. You probably track. have hundreds yeah. I have, of cousins. I have, I have a lot of, uh, like, you know, second and third mm -hmm. cousins. I have one first cousin. Interesting. And two first cousins by marriage, which is crazy. Interesting. In an Italian family. Yeah. Is there, like, uh, with the name, like, was there a, a, a specific reason that you want to go by, like, a creative moniker in creating the, in doing your music? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think I really knew what I was going to do with this project when I first started it. I was with a band at the time called Captain Kid um, playing drums, and I... This is like 2016. And I just started some success with them yeah, too. You, yeah, you guys we had, went on a pretty big tour and stuff. Yeah, we toured a little bit. We'd open up for for a couple cool uh, cool uh, acts, and um, we had the opportunity to play like Firefly Festival. Kind of culminated in that. What's yeah, that? that was like probably one of the biggest festivals you guys did. With that. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah, and then um, 
uh, moving to Columbus, I mean, in general, meeting those guys um, definitely had a big influence on the way I started writing, getting a little bit more into like pop music and all that. So, but yeah, starting this project, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with it. I know I didn't really want to go by my name. I just wanted to start putting music out there mm-hmm. and um, and allow it to become something. Yeah, allow like. it to become something and, and really have no expectations, you know. And if we're being honest, I mean, Nick, we love you. Nick Sampson's not very sexy. Lapora, now that's sexy. You know what I mean? Like that's that's, that's way <laughs> that's way better. You're not a boy band for Christ's sakes. You know what it I mean? Sounds like yeah. a cologne, like yeah. a like a high end cologne. Yeah, I want to spritz myself with that. The Lapore? Yeah, I want to spritz <laughs> myself with that. That's that should be like nice. a that should be like a promo thing. We yeah. make you into a cologne commercial. We could. Yeah. You could do the background music for the perfume. As long as your face is on, you're just you're just sitting there drinking a, a whiskey, and we do, we do the whole like cl- like but shoot it like a Cologne commercial. I think that'd be so fun. Um, it's interesting to me that you said drumming for Captain Kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you actually learned music from your dad, Sean, right? Your dad was a yes. percussionist and a vocalist. You guys did all the homework. I, I did f- no homework. You see no laptop for me <laughs> this time. My production <laughs> team is bar none. Some of the you just best. googled all this right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, next, uh, Sam tonight. Uh, Sean is dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dan's <perfect>. actually FBI. <laughs> right. um, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad, uh, Sean, um, played drums. My uh, my grandfather, Frank, badass keyboard player. No. Back in the day. Oh, yeah. Very cool. And then uh, and my uncle. So those three guys, just like watching them and growing up with them. Um, definitely had a big influence. Did you guys, like, as growing up, like, were they, were you going to clubs with them, watching them play music? Were they in bands? Like, what was kind of, what was all the above? Uh, yeah, all? I would go to band practice with my dad all the time. I mean, it would just, you know, I would be like, you know, eight years old, mm-hmm. and you don't have homework at that time. No. You know, so you, I would, mm-hmm. you know, wouldn't really, like, hang out with too many friends in my neighborhood. I would just spend the evening go with my dad to uh, band practice, and I would just, watch him for hours and then I would go to his shows. Um, I remember going to a lot of weddings with him. Oh he nice. Play oh, weddings play wing too. Shows. Oh yeah. W- were they so, doing like the, were they the cover band or were they My dad was in a lot of cover bands, but he was also in a lot of original bands too. Oh cool. growing up. Mm. Um, and so yeah, just just always just wanting to be in that environment. And were and were drums first for you? Drums yeah, drums were first um, for me and, and still relatively, you know, is my primary instrument i would say i'm i'm a drummer through and through yeah that, that's yeah. your uh, your home beacon your that's home my home calling. beacon yeah. yeah yeah and it's uh it's harder to play drums re- you know recently um i i haven't played as much lately i came here to to Bay wave a couple weeks ago just to bang on matt's drums which is nice i haven't done that in a while but i'm just mostly like writing um uh, so i don't get a chance to just Bang out on the drums. Well, I feel like too, you're doing more solo stuff. It's like you don't really need the the. You can just do that on your synth, right? Like you can get all that stuff that what you need. You don't really. Yeah, I'm mostly programming drums. I I have yet to. I I want to record um, live drums for this project. I haven't had the opportunity yet to. But um, do you have a first memory of like the time you're like, I want to do this. I love watching my dad, like my grand, my uncle. Like, what what, do you have a moment that you remember? You're like, oh man, this is something. Like, I want to do this too. Like, you know. Um, I don't think it was really until like high school to where I really, right. I had always played drums. I wasn't in a lot of bands growing up in high school. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't until like my senior year, um, my dad had met this guitar player, my friend, Joey Ariema, um, back in Cleveland. Joey knows how to play. Yeah. Joey is a badass player. Do you know Joey? No, but okay. he sounds no, like he's a bad ass player. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, I can just tell why the name is a good but, guy. Uh, but, um, and uh, he had introduced me, and Joey was a couple years older than me at the time, and I was like 18. And, um, and uh, I hadn't really been in a serious band yet, and he was looking for a drummer, and I, um, I just took the opportunity. I quit playing lacrosse that year and i practiced for like two weeks straight and I had coach my... doug was so pissed at you coach <laughs> coach fink oh if yeah i'm sorry coach fink sorry coach fink i'm so Friggin sorry nick what, what do you He's think like, you're a pretty boy that down. can play you're drums like, down. like yeah i am coach flink <laughs> yeah so <laughs> um and um we uh, my, that was my first band it was uh it was mouth wired shut was our name 
Oh no. Um, it, it was Joey's. It was called Joey Ariema Band, and then he changed it to Mouthwired Shut because he had major jaw surgery like a couple months before I joined the band, and so that was the influence for mm, the it's name. Idol, yeah. Um, and then, um, but yeah, I tried out, and I and it was my first band, and I just sort of fell in love because the guy the, Joey and then the, the uh, bass player Tommy. Um, they were just really awesome players, and they were a couple years older than me. And I just thought it was like the coolest thing to be like mm. in a band with guys yeah. that were like twenty, and I'm eighteen. I'm like, this is what I want to do. I want to play music, and then and you like got to learn from them, and yeah. also like you know get that creative, that collaborative energy. There's girls them. at shows, you know. That, There's that, gr- that, there, yeah, yeah, there are girls at shows hurts. now, and you know, and uh, you know, at, for the first time, I'm like I felt cool. I'm like I I can do something. Like I'm. I'm like, I guess it was that point where I sort of realized, like, yeah, this is what I'm good at. I've always done this. I've never just really... That it could be, like, part of your yeah, identity. exactly. Like, this is, like, me. Yeah. Like, this is, like, a you You know, thing. and like I say, growing up in, like, in the Midwest, in Cleveland, Cleveland especially, it's... Um, I guess where I grew up wasn't very diverse in, in you know, the arts and and, and all that. And, and so I, I wasn't really exposed too much to that, Um with kids my age, mm-hmm. um, I went to like an all guys Catholic private school and stuff like that. So I, you know, I didn't really hang out with band guys. Mm-hmm. But then that makes know? it like interesting because then like the scene wasn't like super saturated. So like, I made it feel more special in a way. Yeah, you know? exactly. Did you feel like you finally belonged to a group? Like you're kind of searching for that the whole time. Maybe with the sports, with other stuff at school. Like, oh, I finally belonged somewhere. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. Uh, I think it just, at that point in my life, I started just taking it a little bit more seriously and practicing and putting the time in. And I'm like, and it paid off. And I just joined this band. And I'm like, yeah, this is this feels good. This is what I want to do. No, no, yeah. that's amazing. And at the end of the day, you have built yourself an identity. And then this carried over a little bit into the John Carroll University, right? So you were there for a year and a half. To yeah, start out I, of high school. I um, yeah, I stay I I stayed in Cleveland for a year and a half after graduating to save some money. So I stayed, lived with my parents for a year and a half. I was also dating someone at the time for a while, and then transferred to OSU. She was a year behind me. Went there, and then, um, and then very shortly after, um, I met my friend Eric who was looking for um, a drummer in his band, Captain Kid. Um, And uh, I met him through this music club called Musicians Collective at Ohio State. And I've met some of, like, my closest friends. So you're into cults, too. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Fun. Musicians Cult Collective. Yeah. (laughs) That's what Beta Wave actually is. We're we're a cult. There's going to be some bloodletting after this. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) There's going to be leeches. I hope you aren't squirmish. (laughs) Um, so I, uh, I, I met, and I've met like, um, one of my best friends, Xiao, who's from Singapore. I met him. He was an international student at the time at Ohio state, met him through that club. Just like, I met a bunch of really cool musicians and it was just an opportunity to, um, get my feet wet in the, in the Columbus scene. So I met, um, Eric through there looking for a drummer. And then I went to one of their shows at the Scarlet and Gray Cafe in, in Columbus, which is no longer there. R.I.P. R.I.P. Uh, yeah, and um, and I I started playing with those guys, and they were in a transition too in their sound. They were very like Arctic Monkeys, like old Arctic Monkeys at the time, very like punk. Um, so good Arctic Monkeys. <laughs> I don't ooh. Hey, ooh, hey, hey, ooh. hey, 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 hey. Yeah, don't don't know, yell man. at me at once. Hot take. Hot take, yeah. Hot Hot take. take for oh, sure. My mic's on fire. <laughs> um, and um. And, and, you know, I was playing, you know, my the band before that, Mouthwire It Shut, and then, you know, just what I was listening to in general was a lot of, just like, hard rock, right. metal, dad rock, um, rock, you know, and then... Just good old rock. Um, and then I, I just started... Wanna rock! Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Turn the power up! That's rock! Um, and uh, we were all getting really into, like, Synthesizers and programming stuff. So in so, sense, dude. Like, you know, I started getting into like writing. You synth do have a love music. affair with synths, though. I do. You know, yeah. yeah. But I mean, the coolest way possible. I love them mm-hmm. too. Um, why did Captain Kid ask you to join? Like, because I feel like this was a big leg up for you, kind of like 
this was your next big step, right? I mean, obviously. I mean, how did that even come to about? Um, well, they were also, you know, they were also from Cleveland, which is not that crazy, you know, going, you know, no. hey, we're all going to Ohio State in Columbus. You're from Cleveland? What? What? Yeah. Get oh, out of here. Shocker. You're from the west side? We're from the east side. Oh. oh I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I just, I just, be, just really clicked with those guys very quickly, and we were all, we all became best friends. All those guys were in my wedding, and, you know, uh, that was just a really, a really um, big time for me just in my growth now. I mean, I wouldn't be the writer that I am now, or just the way I write, and as I am as an artist is definitely influenced by, like, transitioning over to Columbus and being in that music scene, being in that band. Mm -hmm. and being exposed to all those different people's personalities, um, different religions, different backgrounds, I think is a huge shaping point. Yeah, I, yeah. That's um, why it's so important for people to get out, right? Yeah, and especially a, a big state university like that. People are always like, how do you meet anybody? Like, what are you talking about? There's... 50,000 people here. You throw a rock, you're going to slam somebody yeah, straight in the face. Exactly. Just become friends with people. You know? So, uh, yeah, it, it was just a really, really cool town. If you've never been to Columbus, um, it's a big, small city. And mm. uh, the art scene's really cool there. And it, whether or not you're into art or sports or whatever, you know, it's it's a really cool town to meet people and, and grow and, and be, you know, it's the saying yes to the opportunity. The opportunities though right i mean i feel like that's some people's biggest problems is an opportunity will pass them by and they will either won't jump up to the occasion or won't say yes to something so i feel like you're a yes man i think so i mean you know um maybe at the at the time it didn't sound like a uh um too huge of a life-changing moment or i guess i didn't you know in hindsight now i think about all these decisions that i've made and you know I yeah. definitely don't think I would be where I am now, and you know, but like just as simple as like you know, um, not going to, you know, Ohio State, you know, right out of high school and spending a year in Cleveland and being in that band and then transitioning at that time yeah. and meeting those guys at that specific time and you know, and then, um, or not going to college at all. I mean, you know, uh, you know, right. um, and or, just pursuing music and you know, um, you never know. Yeah. Or even so. those just like smaller choices, you know, like that that time you decide to go to that show randomly or you exactly. know, like go to meet up with somebody you didn't know, but you're like, oh, well, maybe they're cool. I'm going to go meet them anyways. You know, right, like, right, right. Those like little small choices. And that's like kind of cool that you have, you know, a natural evolution, like your artistry between like because you have like your high school band and then you and then you had your college music. And then it's like as you came out here is when La Parade like kind of started right. coming together more. Yeah. Definitely. I would, yeah, I'd definitely say I would, yeah, I'm a yes man. I mean, saying yes to playing uh, Moonrise 12 days before Moonrise, and I wouldn't be here exactly. talking to you guys if you pretty, know, I didn't play that show. Pretty cool. Yeah. Which was, yeah, I thought that was pretty rad, too. I remember, like, yeah, we, like, lost one band, like, last minute, and was like, oh, somebody's already ready to step You're in. Like, like, I know this French cool. guy. He's <laughs> pretty awesome. He's I'm, new in town. Yeah, yeah, he's... Uh, I think he's, that's legit what I thought. I think it was... <laughs> yeah. I think you were going to be a Frenchman. That was, like, saving our asses. <laughs> I'm here to play the old... The French rise. always save our asses, right? I, I you know. want <laughs> me to play music? Feel sexy. <laughs> Where's the red wine? <laughs> um, well, to get back to it... Um, did you have like an oh my god moment with Captain Kid where like I want to go off by myself? Was there was there a killing of kind of like your id where you're like I need to I need to sacrifice something to myself and get out of this Captain Kid, which is being successful. It kind of felt like maybe a scary thing to leave. Yeah, I mean those guys became my my brothers, my best friends, um, and it was probably like three years into being the band where, I, like I said, I just really started getting into just, you know, garage band, just, just writing. I, sure. I had no, nothing to do with the writing process really maybe the first couple of years in the band. Mm. And then, um, and then I started writing just some demos, um, and writing things for Lapore and then eventually, um, becoming a, um, a collaborator in the writing process for Captain Kid. Uh, Wide Eyes. Wide Eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, was the first one you got your, first step out of writing um, almost the whole song yeah well so uh limit was the first song that i um uh wrote most of with along with um some of the other guys and then wide eyes um was the first song i really wrote all the instrumentation and and melodies and then collaborating with nate 
um, our uh, art singer who um, who write all the wrote all the lyrics and everything. And we're, after doing that, you're like, I want to do this on my own. Like, what what uh, made you uh, pull yourself away from them? Did, was there I, any? I just you know it really. I mean, it wasn't just like I got to get away from this band. It was it wasn't that. It was just my my life was changing at the time. I had, I had met my wife a couple years before who's awesome that who is fantastic yes hello hi Danny. um she's and, in here um, with us today she we is. won't dig too deep on it <laughs> <laughs> and um you know and like you know I, I was i was i was getting ready to to get married um and i You're had ready always, for a new chapter i mean i was ready I'm, for a new chapter and i i had always wanted to eventually make the move out west move yeah. out to la and i met someone who <laughs> who was cool with that plan and 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 you know and and believed in in me and we we made a dis- decision and you know it just it was just time to to it, move on it, and I wanted to continue right. working on myself and as a writer and you know and I think I think we can all agree with is that's such a hard thing to do to have a surefire thing and then leave it like no I believe in myself but you have to do that to succeed yeah that, absolutely. I mean, you have to. Um, yeah, I guess you just have to know when it's when it's time. And I think I've, I think for the most part, um, I've I've always felt like I I knew when it was was time to okay. maybe move on to the, ne- you to the next. You just needed thing. you just needed a bigger canvas to to paint your picture, like so that way you were able to kind of spread yourself into like just all the production, like you know, craft the sound around where you right, wanted it to right. be. Yeah, and just and then also you're just beginning to collaborate with other um, producers and, and writers, you know, during that that time at towards the end of Cap, you know, Captain Kid's time together and which Captain Kid is still is still a band, you know, um uh, Nate, yeah, no one cares anymore. Nate, no, no, no. <laughs> Nate, they're great. <laughs> my, uh, our singer Nate was, is still uh, writing along with my um, main uh, producer and um, and co-writer Kyle Kanzig uh, for Lapore. Oh hell uh, those, yeah! The, the, the two of those guys are are duo duoing it up for Captain Kid right now. So very cool. Yeah. Well, I hope they make it out here. We could catch a uh, catch a live show. I I hope they uh, I hope they do. I hope. I, I, I want to play a live show very soon here. Yeah, do we have anything on the books coming up that we we're, can look we're, forward we're to? Working on we're working on it. We're working on it. On it. Um, okay. I, d- working on I did have an opportunity um, a couple weeks ago to play um, Writer's Block at the Hotel Cafe. Oh, nice. Um, which was cool. It was, uh, you know, first time. It, I mean, it was. I've never done anything like that. It was, you know, a bunch of artists. Yeah, all playing, it was like a real big slate of All playing three people. songs, acoustic. Um, so I have, uh, yeah, besides Moonrise, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to very soon here, get the full production going, you know, in the fall, you know, knock on wood. Don't, don't say anything yeah. yet. Don't yeah, say okay, it. Don't yeah, say yeah, the we words. Go there. Um, speaking of writer's block, how do you deal with writer's block? I mean, we all suffer from it. I know I do. Do you have a little trick to get yourself out of something like that to inspire yourself? Do you have any, uh, home remedies? Um, I wish I did. I don't. You're still figuring um, it out too. I I'm pretty good with not driving myself too crazy. Scratch I try up the walls. not to overthink too much. Um, I keep myself busy enough to where I feel like mm-hmm. I can let something sit for a while. Right. Um, and, you know, and if you know whether I, and then maybe go to something else music related or you know doing something that's acting related and having to concentrate on that. Um, so you're not like a like sit down and like kind of just like write something at once. You like to like kind of do it, it piece it, by piece. It depends. Like I mean, I can tell very quickly when something's going to be something when something's not. So I don't beat something to a you know like a dead horse or whatever. Well, I would the term say. I mean, even talking to you, I feel like you have a great intuition. You... Yeah. I mean, um, yeah. I mean, when it comes to like, for example, like writing um, vocal melodies, a lot of what you hear on a recording is probably the first one of the f- first few ideas that I came up with. Um, I just don't like to over. I feel like when I'm singing melodies over an instrumental or something, and I'm um, just sort of doing something off the cuff. It, in my mind, it's the most genuine or, or organic thing at mm-hmm. that time, and so I I don't it's like, like to go back too much and be like. 
that can be like way better and it can be and mm-hmm. I, I know i know i don't always want to stick to that rule of thumb but I'm it's more think- like if if the idea is going to form into something it will like it just will and then if not like you know, right right or like it, move on this feels good right now i'm gonna run i'm gonna run with this i feel so. like a lot of artists too like the 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 flow is coming through you. It the the right thing is coming down to that piece of paper at the right time. You don't need to tweak it a bunch because it's already the way you wanted it. You know what I mean? You're getting inspired. It's going down, and you don't need to force it because forcing it's not going to feel good and not probably it's probably going to sound like shot. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Um, switching over, you're doing a little acting as well, and I can see I why. I think we all can. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Timmy C over here. Yes. Um, your first foray into acting, little Shakespeare, right? Was, Taming of the Shrew? Yes. Um, it was, um, it was a fall day, October. Um, my friend, um, Frank Gallo, fellow actor out here, my friend, um, he, uh, invited me to an audition. I had always had uh, a desire to, to get into acting. Um, but, uh, we were roommates at the time and he's like, I'm going to go to this audition at this, um, this little theater right down the street from us called the Columbus Civic Theater, this little 49 seat theater. And this was in college? This, or uh, right this after? is, uh, uh, about a year and a half after I graduated okay, cool. college or, or maybe it was, a, it was the following, I graduated in December, 2015. So it was like a year after that or something. So I'm still living with like. Uh, I mean, it was just just a couple months before I met Danielle, still living with like six other guys in a house, you know, just off oh, of campus. Oh yeah, bachelor pad. You know, so um, a couple of Shakespearean actors looking it up. Yeah, um, and uh, and I, I, you know, I had really nothing prepared. Uh, I think I had a, I like a very contemporary monologue prepared, and of course, and of course I went there and <laughs> and was just cold reading, you know. Uh, the play and um and i didn't hear anything for like a month and a half and then they just called me and they're like hey um you know uh, richard albert the director gave me a call and asked if i wanted to roll and i ended up playing gremio which is this very creepy aristocratic um uh just just creep old man trying to earn the affection of this very young woman hunchback did you have a hunchback uh I sort of played him with the hunch. I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I played him. You, very, I, very, I, you know, I, I played him. You know, I, I was. Uh, it was just, just sort of um, strange, I guess. Just like my first acting experience, playing like this old man Shakespeare. I, I played him with like this Robert De Niro uh, oh, nice. persona, and just had like a this. face the whole my time. My cake yeah. is dough. <laughs> And then you go from playing this hunchback, <laughs> disgusting old man to yeah. then being cast as Romeo and Romeo and Juliet. That I, was a couple years later. Yeah, a couple years later yeah. on the road, but this laid the foundation. You kind of got the bug a little bit. Yeah, I definitely. Uh, I mean, I read some uh, some Shakespeare in 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 school. Um, I was also in a Shakespeare play, Much to Do About Nothing. Oh, nice. Yeah, I played um, the gentleman that was uh, looked like Horatio from the back that was making out with that other chick that was you know, everyone thought was. The, the lead gal yes. and you know what I mean everyone sees it it's yes. a big hubble blue mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. um, I did not mind rehearsals for that part <laughs> yeah, that was that was fun um, you know you're you're 15 16 years old like hey fake make out with this chick you yeah is, I mean? it, is like, it the rehearsal uh, for the kiss scene today it's the kiss scene today right <laughs> <laughs> You gross. <laughs> um, but so you love this Shakespeare stuff so you sign up for another one um, yeah there's a there's a lot of Shakespeare in Columbus, um, and I'm I am no um, Shakespeare historian. expert or historian. Um, I have I have friends that are that help <laughs> that help me out when it, when I need <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I uh, a co- co- um, a castmate of mine that was in Taming of the Shrew. She played um, Petruchio, Amanda Phillips. Um, oh, nice! Amazing, amazing actor and director. Um, she, and then she, um, you know, this is like, you know, two years after that, she was casting uh, for Romeo and Juliet at Actors Theater of Columbus, which is um, this big outdoor theater company. 
Um, they do uh, Shakespeare in the Park every every summer. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So um, and she was um, and she was casting and invited me to audition and and that was uh, that was a huge uh, being given that much responsibility um, definitely propelled me to want to like really come out here too and and really want to pursue it. Do you feel like there's a, a kind of tug and pull between the acting and the musical performing and writing music? Is there one that you're more in love with now or is it, it you're not sure which way to go? I mean, yeah, is it, it's like, I, I don't know. Sometimes right. I just sort of, I try not to um, let one dominate the other. Dominate the other. I, I, I try to address something and, and you know when i when i feel like i i really need to focus this i you know with my time it's definitely very mm -hmm. very difficult to do yeah um i never want to feel like one is suffering over the other but sometimes they they may i just mm -hmm. have to it's different ways of approaching it you know like when you want to do all the things there's only so much time in the day you know right. like you know i try to do film stuff i try to do music stuff i try to do a podcast stuff and it's like Get you get down on yourself when you like try to be like oh no th there should be a balance here but yeah. it's like you know but other times I just kind of go with the momentum I'm like oh well these Pretty projects much. are going good so exactly. I'm gonna roll with this for a bit right so like for you know with music I mean um, like I I recorded an EP back in February um, and so I'm like sitting on that right now and a couple singles and so I'm not writing a ton right now. Um, you got all. some bullets in the chambers. I got some, yeah, exactly. And so I've been much more focused on on um, acting the past couple couple months and, and weeks. Well, but. you were in something recently, the decoy flick, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my friend, my friend Frank, who I'd mentioned. Yeah. Um, this was last, not this past July, but the July before 2020, that. Twenty twenty. Yeah. So we're, uh, you know, at the the height of all the craziness and stuff mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um just sort of took it in our own hands to to put together a short film and um and and he wrote he wrote it and can, you know we we discussed it and you know filmed it and shot it and and did everything our ourselves and did you and that enjoy that experience i did i did that was the first time i think it was the first time i had ever acted with frank and and because of that short film um there was a, a director that um, was doing a, an independent short film uh, back in February that not even knowing that we were like f good friends. If you saw us both in, both in this short film and then casted us together in a, another short film called Table for Two, which I'm hoping you guys will see. Very uh, Well, very I would like here. to have a table for three. Us boys go out to dinner. Can we do that? Ironically, yeah. I won't give up too much away, but ironically, there is a table for three <laughs> in the film. I won't give too much away, but oh, I, uh, sequel baiting us. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the third? We were going to get too yeah. much away. Well, okay, right, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a climax in yeah. the film. Okay, right. yeah. There, there, well, there, shucks, it wasn't me. I'll tell you that much, <laughs> folks. It, I didn't get invited to the fucking dinner. So, okay, good. Um, yeah, there was like there there was like something like kind of interesting, like how like you know everybody had to kind of whenever we like went under, you know, like on switch and like how we were like making things and stuff. There was like kind of like this like electricity though of like still being able to do something and then being like, oh, how are we going to figure out how to shoot this and shoot it safely and right, like, right. do all the things that you like didn't do differently, you know? So there's there like something like really fun about that. For sure. For sure. And, and, uh, but I mean with, with music, especially the past year, I mean, it's definitely allowed. I mean, that's how this EP came to fruition was just having so much time. <laughs> yeah, because I, I imagine, like, yeah. you know, because it's like you guys moved here and then, like, you only got, like, what, about a, a year of regular L.A. time? Four months. Four months, not even. Yeah. So it's like you didn't even really get to do L.A. things no, yet. No, I really, I mean, probably since March of this year, you know, when everybody's getting vaccinated and things were opening back up. I mean, that's when I really got to start experiencing LA. I mean, I've done more in the past three months than I have the 18 months prior. Yeah. Well, we love having you and we're all going to go out us, everybody. Yes. Yes. We have to, we have to, um, your latest track, right track, right track. Yeah. Just recently dropped. What was the inspo for that? It sounded like you were maybe on the wrong track and this was kind of a coming out, coming to 
song for you? Is this what were you going through it while writing this or um, experiencing this? I'm having a hard time remembering if this was as lockdown was starting or if it was just before that. Um, I, it must have been before because I, I the, the song is about having, you know, um, having a more traditional well, out here. I've not had like a traditional work schedule. I've worked mostly like right. you know, service industry industry jobs. But um, there was a time where I, you know, I had a nine to five job. Um, you know, working behind a desk, and Ew, um, gross. right, and um, and it, yeah, it was just sort of about you know not wanting to not wanting to like party the rest of the weekend, but it's Sunday. You're you know you're still maybe a little hungover from the day before. I have need a no little, idea what you're talking need a about. A little bit of <laughs> a little bit of hair of the dog, and um, just sort of like that. Anxiety, I think you know you might get the Sunday scaries. The Sunday yeah. scaries. Yeah. yeah, we've all been um, there. But it's like how like a it feels like a like a maturation like kind of track. Like if it, it does have a very like hopefulness to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but like on Sundays, like I have to finish all the alcohol in my house. Or else I'll drink it on Monday too. So you know what I mean? Like that's like I'm like I'm like drinking half the bottle of red wine, pouring the other half down right. the sink. Like I, I gotta sober up well, and that, like get ready for fucking Monday. You right. Know? Like, well, that's essentially. If I finish this whole bottle. I will have a bad time tomorrow right, morning. Exactly. That's I mean that's pretty much what the <laughs> what the song's about. It's no, like, that's what it's fucking like, like. I need to get on the right track. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I'm let's on the get wrong track. Right. Let's get every last ounce of it of this <laughs> yeah. wine out of this bottle and then one tomorrow one sip for me one sip for the sink one sip for me right. one sip for the sink right. yeah yeah good so well, I'm glad you're back on track you look great I, today thank like, you. honestly I gotta get back oh no I'm off tomorrow oh I have a whole day off yeah. tomorrow so are we gonna get a little silly later tonight I love Quite possibly yeah I think I'm off tomorrow I can't remember either I, Dev, mean, I work in the <laughs> evening so I'm always off tomorrow in a sense <laughs> <laughs> when you kind of think right. about it. Right. I'm always off in the worst <laughs> sense possible. Um, it, is there any projects that you're looking forward to now in, um, in acting or um, film or TV or anything? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm uh, preparing for another short film um, with a group of guys. Um, and I'm mostly doing a lot of like research right now with those sort of, sort of films that they are... Uh, um, are recommending uh, a lot of like I watched oh god what was it called recently um, Rebels of the Neon oh my god what is it called Forest it's a Taiwan it's a Taiwan film Rebels of the Neon Palace Rebels of the Neon of the Neon, of the neon Rock yeah of let's the just neon keep guessing it this is really good Rebels radio Rebels of the Neon God I think it is yeah that's it thank you um, yes. good. good? Very good film. I went all the way to... Um, <laughs> like, I watched half of it. It was fantastic. No, it was I, the best first half we, of it uh, I've ever seen. We, uh, I was casting the short film, and then um, the directors invited me out to... Um, I went down to Orange County to the Lorita. Yeah. La, is that what it's called? Ah. La, La, the, the Frida Theater. It's like this independent oh, theater. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're um, talking about. And watched it like 10 o'clock at night, this, uh, this Taiwanese film. Really, really cool. Um, there's a very little dialogue. That's good. Film. I don't like reading subtitles. <sighs> there are, well, you have to. Well, yeah, but yeah. you said there's less. And you don't have to. Yeah, yes, I could choose much. not to read. Just not right. know what's going on. Um, and uh, but that's what's so. Um, that's sort of like the influence for the short film too that we're developing. It's uh, a lot of nonverbal communication. Which I think a is... A lot of good looks. I feel you have a, a steamy lot of looks. look. Yeah, yeah. A lot of Long looks. days. See, I like that kind of stuff, too. Like, I li I, like I'm a less words, the better a lot of the time. Like, because I like visual storytelling. Yeah. yeah. What's, well, what's cool about this, this film, that film, and, and what I think we're, we're trying to do with this is um, it's very much like a day in the life like you're people watching. Right. I mean, who doesn't love people watching? Mm. I love... I love people I, watching. I, I have a... People watching has gotten better lately, right? I feel like everyone forgot how to interact with each other. There's, there's like it's, it's oh, yeah. weird out there more so than ever. Yeah, you know I love I mean? watching awkward handshakes when it's like, <laughs> are they going for the handshake, the yeah, hug? Yeah, yeah. People watching for yeah, it's, yeah. It's like the hot potato. Like, do I touch your elbow? Do you want me to rub your face? Uh, what, yeah. what are we doing here? Handshakes are having a hard time coming back. They like are. it's, they it's are. all fists and elbows now. Like the handshake, it, it, it might be done. R.I.P. R.I.P. Handshakes. handshakes. I love handshakes. Not when they're sweaty hands, though. That's the kind of don't That's like. True. And I hate a bad so handshake. 
Oh, what would you categorize a bad handshake of? You just know, a limp, just limp hand. Like a, one of the soft. <laughs> yes. Like, what if I this? kissed it? This. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, that's, that's my le- that's, that's my least favorite, favorite too. Yeah. Just like what is, what is yeah, that? Fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice to meet you. Hello, you may meet me now. <laughs> yeah, right. Welcome to my abode. Like this guy's gonna kill me probably. He has really <laughs> creepy handshakes. Well, I hope you don't have any creepy handshakes in your near or any of our future. No, I promise. Yeah. Okay. Thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, at the end of the day, we're so excited for any next iterations. Of La Pora. Yes. Yeah. I, I was mentioning a uh, EP that I'm. Do we know when release at all? Uh, I would. I'm hoping to release the first single with the music video in the next two months, maybe. Hopefully. I love um, that. And see, that's it, why we doable. had you. It's yeah, that's why we had you here today because we want you to plug your new stuff and get people excited about it because we all are ecstatic. We cannot wait. Thank you. Well, yeah. Keep listening to Right Track. Yes. Um. And then just before just before that, I also released a song called Love Song. Yes. Um, which was in collaboration with my wife, Danny, who did a uh, music video, a uh, stop motion animation video. Um, so sick. Shut yes. up. I Power love couple love shit Claymation. right there. So um, definitely check that out in the meantime. But, uh, but yeah, it's a six song EP I'm, I'm hoping to put out and, and have. I don't know if it's all going to be out by the, before the end of the year, but, um, you know. The goal is to have a single or two out very, very soon here. Yeah, we're super excited for that. And um, I, I was going to do this for like an opening segment, but I feel like this is a good closing segment is um, we uh, ask, you know, what's keeping you wavy? Like what's like something that's been inspiring your work? Maybe something that inspired the EP coming up, like whether it be other music, a movie, um, uh, some sort of art. Are you feeling wavy? <sighs> Man. Um, well, I, I've been... Uh, I've been really busy with acting stuff lately and really focusing on that. Finally got back into um, at my acting class um, for the first time in a year Ooh, and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. So oh, good. We, yeah, which is cool. So um, um, being in that environment, again, getting back on stage, um, working with my acting coach, uh, Marjorie Valentine, um, has just, uh, yeah, it's given me like a new resurgence, new energy, um and uh yeah, it's just kind of revving me up to get to to get going and, and to It's and good, you're getting inspired it. by people again and that's yeah. huge. I also watched Val recently. Have you have you seen the documentary yet? I don't know. Oh Palmer. no, but I want to though. Um good? It's so good. I want it's so to so good. It's really it, it I'm very, very sad of of what ha- you know. Yeah. I don't I don't want to say you know, I it, it sounds like he's he's trying to make the best of of situ- his situation. Yes, but um, it's, it's pretty tragic. Well, this, it is. For yeah. the people who don't know, this is the Val Kilmer documentary on yeah. Hulu. Yeah. Um, he lost his voice. It's Which I had no horrible. idea until I... I I, uh, I knew that he, you know, had sort of disappeared from the limelight for quite some time. And I knew, I, I guess he, you know, the reason I didn't know that he had throat cancer is because he also was hiding it purposely. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so I'm sure there's sympathy. a lot of people that didn't know. I think it's so cool that he's still going out, signing autographs, going to things, and people still love all his, like his Doc Holiday, Batman, all that stuff. And like he, him going out and signing autographs from these people that still care about these movies is, yeah. he said it really helped him get through this yeah. extremely yeah, sure. difficult time because I mean yeah. the guy has great acting chops. I'm, I'm intrigued to see it because it's like interesting. I wouldn't have taken him as a guy that like just like film would film his own life constantly. Right. So right. they just had all this footage like yeah. from him personally. And I it's think crazy. it's like super cool. Um, yeah, it's really cool to see him, you know, go from starting at Juilliard and you know, all the way through his career until now. And I used to love Val Kilmer. Oh, I used to f- totally. freaking love Tombstone and Doc Holliday. And so, um, so it was really hard to watch in that, in that aspect too, seeing him now, but, um, but to see the, his old videos when he was starting out and the auditions that he put together, I mean, he would send audition tapes and would film them like they were short films or, you know, he would put just so much effort in, um, and it's it was, it's definitely like inspiring to oh, totally. to see someone like that and you know well a dog that neither one of you should watch is Share and the Loneliest Elephant. Um, it is a lonely dark journey. I've heard of <laughs> yeah, that it's one. Also yeah. the worst thing to masturbate to ever. So you know I mean don't think about that. Um, There's all a, red wine all alone. Just yeah Sunday night scaries. I was listening to uh, 
<laughs> listening to NPR, <laughs> and there was uh, there's a new documentary called uh, the the loneliest whale that I really want to see too. It's about no. A, is this about the last whale on planet Earth? Because I don't want to. No, see that. no, not the last oh, whale on God, planet Earth. I love it's whales. the it's it, it's a whale that I guess is a a hybrid whale, like a like it's from it's like two whales that made it that no normally mate and it's so it can't communicate with other whales oh no and yeah, it's and they're that. trying to they've been oh, like no. chasing it for like years trying to find this whale I, I they didn't give it away whether or not they found it you gotta watch it sounds document, like the saddest thing to do <laughs> it and does. he couldn't figure it out he's still alone out there in the ocean right. he or she yeah um well i was feeling wavy i'm just rocking out to this new jungle album Mm. Love in stereo. It's fantastic. Yeah. Front to back, it's a good one. So I've been uh, catching some yeah, catching yeah, yeah. some vibes on that sucker. Yeah, you were texting me about it and we were talking about it today. And, and like, you're, you're like, it's real on your brain. Shut up. I don't care. <laughs> no, it's a it's a good problem. It's a good it's a good album. Yeah, no, but yeah. I loved it. I've been having fun. Um those guys are a fun band to watch live. Those are guys Very cool. those guys are a good time. Ooh, that would be a fun show live. Um, me keeping me wavy is um. I'll shout out some uh, some local peeps. I have some friends that I met like um through the miles working at a vaccination site. They're in a band called Thumpasaurus. And Love a name. Yeah, great name. Uh, they're really fun. Um, they're like a they're like a hybrid of like Talking Heads and Wolfpack. Like very funky, but also like kind of very theatrical as well. That is quite the child. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, they they just did a show a couple of weeks ago at the Lodge Room here in L.A. and it was like cool because they had like skits in between like songs and they had Shut friends up. in costumes playing Dinner characters and like it was like a whole thing and like all their music videos are like very like theatrical as well. Um, they just released a new uh, track called Strutton. Um, and it's uh, nice. really it's really funky. Um, they have another one called I'm Pissed that just came out and has a super fun music video to it. So, I usually um, only songs. strut when I'm pissed. I'll say right. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's about dancing out your anger. It's I when love. you're pissed and you and so you just dance about it. And it's, it's that's pretty awesome. great. Well, I wish that's how we out. all resol- we've resolved all our issues. Just strutting really just hard? Strutting and dancing. Strutting and dancing. <laughs> 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 it also... Uh, <laughs> Never mind. I was gonna say a terrible joke. I will say too. I, I I've been uh, getting very wavy. I've been I'm gonna put Daddy Disco on the spot. I've just been jamming swoon. How Who is that? Like no <laughs> other. Yeah. Who is this Daddy um, Speak of? <laughs> really, really enjoy that track. Looking, oh, really looking you. forward to more music. Thank you. Yeah, I man. appreciate. It. We'll, we'll we'll show you some tidbits after this. Yes. We'll, you'll get some sneak peeks. Uh, Please. Uh, yes. And um, dear audience, maybe you get some tidbits of yourselves maybe later. Who knows? But uh, Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Everybody, you guys. check out on Spotify, Apple Music, La Pereira, and um, who? La, <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> Did I say? Check it wrong? them out as well. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're, they're a great. Fantastic Latin <laughs> band out of um, Sweden. <laughs> we'll just let you say it, Nick. <laughs> Check out La Pore. Uh, La Pore. <laughs> underscore, <laughs> underscore L-A-P-O-R-E. I forgot the hyphen at the end, underscore. sorry. <laughs> it's my Instagram handle. But yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for yes. coming by, and uh, we look forward to talking to you soon. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Break Breaking pin. Waves Out. Yeah. Breaking Waves Out. Where can the people find you, Dan? Uh, Music Man Dan on Instagram. Add me. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Daddy Disco. And make sure you guys are subscribed to the YouTube channel. We have more um, amazing interviews with some of our really cool friends coming up. So make sure you guys are subscribed and uh, don't miss these. Bye-bye. Bye.